Hello YouTube, welcome back to my channel and for the second part of this kit build of a Roxy Mouldings LBSCR uh, all third Stroudley carriage uh, this is a four wheeler uh, hopefully you watched part one which is mainly the chassis being built which you can see in the background here and now we move on to the more interesting part which is the body so you can see here we have the parts for the body and the partitions so it's at the side and the partitions I already have formed a side here which I'll talk you through we've got the drop lights uh, for the door windows and the ends which were here but I've already made one so there's one end here as well and another partition here So getting straight into the body assembly, I will read through the instructions and basically show you how to go about it. So the first part is to detach the body sides from the fret by cutting through the small bridging pieces and clean up the edges with small needle files. So obviously you need a knife, a steel rule and some needle files which is in my drawer. But we'll just quickly remove small bridging pieces Just keep the partition safe and got one removed side this thing needs to be cleaned up with the needle files where we have just removed it from the fret. So having cleaned up the side or sides, uh, what you'll need to do now is go into part two. Now I showed you um, in part one all the tools and bits and pieces I will be using. And you'll see this chunk of wood in front of me, which is my sort of tumble home uh, jig to uh, bend the bottom section of the carriage inwards so you can make your own or you can use a piece of dowel or tube to roll the tumble home so I'll just read it to you uh, using a piece of dowel or tube roll the tumble home into the body sides below the waste panels which is basically the mouldings uh, along the middle of the carriage only a gentle curve is required match to the coach ends bend the top flanges to match the roof angle which are this bit along here so you need to bend this over where you can see the holes which will hold the partitions so you need to bend that over and create a tumble home along the lower deck and I'll show you how to do that you can do that with a two steel rules or you can use a vise which has a nice clean edge and then you can bend uh, the side over and we'll show you how to do the tumble home first so here you see the carriage side in the jig now you can see this jig is made up of two pieces of wood one to clamp it and the other has a curved edge this is actually a piece of skirting board um, and the idea is you can bend it over and just form that gentle curve of the tumble home. You can do it with a roller or you can do it with um, just gently trying to get it over um, into a nice curve. You can just about see there we've got just a gentle curve coming over already. It still needs a little bit more work but it's nearly there already. So now I've completed the sides of the carriage which you've seen uh, working on the tumble homes and then also the top part folded over. Um, you then have to check it against the ends. Now this is one end I've made up already but you can just use the fret um, one which is still in situ um, but you can just check it and it should just fit in there nicely, match up with the top. You can see that's quite a good fit and that is ready for soldering. Um, so now that's all done we can move on to stage four 
uh, which is adding bits and pieces to the sides like the grab handles and the ventilators on the doors. So part 4 or B4 on the instructions is to apply a tin or a thin a layer of solder onto the back of the ventilator hoods number 15 which is here. Um, so you need to clean them, add some solder this is while they're still on the fret, then cut them out and then add them in the positions above the doors. Uh, this is quite simple to do, there are some other options on here depending which ones you're building like uh, the brake or Isle of Wight versions. Um, so do be careful what you're actually building and select the right option. So these are just going to be standard uh, types so I am going to apply some solder onto the back, clean them up and add them to the side of the carriage. So just following up on the sides of the carriage and one end, uh, you can see I've now added uh, the drop lights, I've also added the ventil on the top, also made it into shape so the top is angled at the roof angle and the tumble home has been formed. And there's still a few other little bits to add onto the side of the carriage like uh, handrails for example. Uh, the kit actually does come with handrails, if I just bring that into shot. You can see here. Now I'm not going to use these uh, for various reasons because they're just a bit flat and also they're just etched which you know is fine but I prefer to use some uh, brass wire, form them around two nails and then bend the ends at right angles to fit into the holes around the actual handle. You can see I've also fitted the handles on the doors. Uh, these can be cleaned up after painting and uh, priming and all that kind of thing. Um, these will be cleaned and then they'll be soldered onto the ends hopefully and we'll follow up with the next part of the instructions. So moving on with the London Brighton South Coast all third, uh, we're now up to the point of adding the smaller details. Uh, now in the last section um, I said about making my own grab handles and grab rails because I wasn't too happy with the etched ones which are quite flat. So if you can see those, if it focuses, there we go. Uh, you can see I've bent a load of 0.45mm brass wire around two pins and these will be shaped at uh, uh, with right angles going into the carriage body. Um, I'm going to try a slightly different method and attach these after painting keeping the inside uh, clean in terms of brass so I can solder them on from the inside. Um, so that was made with using two nails so they're ready to go. So the next part if I zoom in slightly are basically the door hinges. Now on the edge there are holes along the side of the doors. There's one there, one there, one there and you can probably see it slightly better from the inside. Okay, just get it in the light so you can see it there. And so these need to be folded up and made. It's number 20 on the etch, which you can see here. I've done some already, as they do on Blue Peter. Um, so you can see here I've used five already. So these are basically etches, you cut them off and you bend the short end at a 90 degree angle. Make sure they're clean, make sure the inside of the coach is clean. You can see on one I've done already, these are soldered from the inside, you can see there, and they just make small little dimples on the outside to replicate the door hinges. Um, as I say, keep it clean, solder them nice and hot with zero, uh, 145 degree uh, solder for lighter fittings, and that is pretty much there with this side.
Okay, so I've added on the hinges to the doors on both sides, and you can also see I've f temporarily fitted the grab handles on the doors as well. Uh, these just look a little bit better than the etched versions, but it's worth taking the time to do it properly. So I've done that for both sides and they're ready to go on when it's time. Um, now the next section I don't think I've actually shown yet is the end. Now I've already made one end up already. Uh, basically this is a flat section and it's uh, basically folded on the bottom and two sides. And this side basically fits and butts up against the end here. You can see there's a slight gap between uh, the roof um, flat section where you glue the roof on and the end uh, where you can actually fit it and butt it up too. Now I use a piece of wood to get it all tight and fit um, and then you run some solder down the edge here. But also you have to add the, the nuts. These are M2 nuts, brass nuts and these are soldered onto the flat section uh, which folds up uh, into a 90 degree angle. You can see here I've already started work on the other end. So you can see the two two sides folded up. You fold up that side so it creates a 90 degree. Also this side matches the curvature of the tumble home on the bottom half of the end. So this will then get soldered up, uh, get some flux, clean it, clean it flux and then solder. And the nuts, you have to hold them in place, put some solder, run some solder around the outside and that will fix them in place. So as you can see I've now soldered the brass nuts onto the bottom side, or the 90 degree side of the uh, carriage end. Uh, these nuts and screws uh, do come with the kit so uh, don't panic it, it all is included in the kit um, but they are just standard uh, M2 nuts and they have uh, some pan or cheese head um, screws which also uh, go into this. So that's all soldered up and is ready to go and be uh, soldered together with the other side. What I've done also is cleaned uh, clean the edges. You can see here I've cleaned this edge with the fiberglass pen but I've also cleaned this end and also put a blob of solder on. So when I'm butting the two pieces together what I basically do is use uh, these two pieces of wood and put that up against it so that's the one side, and then put this side and make sure it's in the right place before you solder it. I'm reasonably happy with that. So that is then butted up with that. So that gives you a reasonably good, reasonably good placement and position to solder the sides on. Now I'm going to warm up the bottom edge, which I've already put some solder on, which is here. I'm just going to round it off like this, heat it up from this side and then hopefully that will tack the side in place so I can add more solder onto this side. So there we have the two spits together. So there's one side with the end soldered on. Now what I'll do at some point is then repeat the process but put the other end on as well. So that will become the full carriage body. And then after I sort that together, I will then put in the spaces or the carriage compartments, uh, walls, which I will show you next. 
Before adding the partitions, I thought I'd also double check uh, the alignment of the screws, the, the nuts and the holes which uh, are on the base of the carriage body and also on the chassis. Uh, they're a little bit tight so I would suggest when building this model to just open up the holes a tiny bit because if they're too tight um, it will start pulling the body and the chassis in different directions and then the chassis will twist uh, giving you a uneven running as it were and possibly derailments as well so I would advise just opening up those hose holes slightly in the chassis and uh, possibly the uh, the body shell as well just so there's a little bit of movement and uh, it doesn't twist when you tighten the screws up okay so now as you've seen before the carriage is now attached to the chassis but we are now moving on to the internals of the carriage um, so we've basically done in the instructions B10 we skip B12 a little bit move on to B13 and we move on to B14 as we've done the grab handles which you can see on this side so they'll be soldered on a bit later on uh, when I feel the time is right everyone has their own different methods so I rather wait until later after it's been painted and lined as you can't get behind them otherwise um, the next section is really B15 which is actually the roof but I'm not going to go onto the roof, I'm actually going to do, as I mentioned, the insides. Now the insides are basically the partitions, and you can see partitions here. Uh, this is number 16 on the, uh, the etched fret. Now these you clean up and they will slot into the holes which are in the roof, uh, roof edges just down here. So these top sections locate into the holes. However, when I built my other Roxy Moulding kits, as you can see, the wall thickness between each window is not very big at all. It's about half a mil to a millimetre thick. And when you're putting glazing in this, it can be sometimes a problem. So what I've done, not just on my etch kits, but also on my 3D printed ones, is to, as you can see, make an opening on the side here so you've got the one on the fret I need to clean up the ends on this one but the edges are not indented like the one here I've made so I filed out a section um, so it will allow any acetate sheet to be slid between um, each section and then you can glue them um, in place when the car carriage is finished I usually wait until the very end before I actually fit the roof so I'm going through this in my own method now so we're going to go on to the internals and we're going to make the partitions like this solder them in place and then we'll move on to the seating so on to the interior of our London Brighton South Coast all third you can probably see I've already fitted some bits out already um, so this is made up of a ratio um, plastic uh, seating which is uh, ratio 433 carriage compartment seating uh, so it comes like this and you cut it up into sections about 30 mil for this um, wide and I usually do a few little modifications to make it fit and look about right to fit in the carriage um, I've made loads of modifications to this actually fit um, the windows in as well so it's quite tight in there as you can see the partition walls are not very thick so uh, these have been cut down into 30 mil wide sections uh, they then had the top headrest removed as they're a bit tall and then I filed the back of the seat so it's completely uh, flat and can go up against the compartment wall um, I then radius in the bottom edge of the coach seat so it uh, matches the tumble home interior um, and then these get glued into place either using an all-purpose glue or I've used arrow dye so it sticks properly so these will be stuck in uh, the ends aren't stuck in but they fit nicely over the um, I think that's on the end which fixed it to the chassis 
Um, so your screws may need cutting down a little bit just to make sure they fit and hold the body securely on the chassis. Um, I've also added the floor you can see in the bottom. So this is just plastic card that comes with the kit and it's cut down into a strip and uh, you can just about pull this out from underneath if you require uh, access to put in people or put back people that have fallen out of their seats or come unstuck. Um, so that's how it's looking at the moment uh, nothing really too much to show uh, you can see the modifications on the end seat here with two notches cut out of either side to allow the glazing to pass through so really the next stage is we'll move on to the roof and uh, cutting down the roof and what to look out for when doing so So on to fitting out the roof and also you have loads of details to fit on the roof like um, the uh, top or lamp uh, bits that go on the top and various handrails etc. So this is the roof, this is how it arrives. So this is a vacuum form piece of uh, plastic card and then you will need to cut this down to fit onto the carriage itself. Um, my advice on this is to, you know, cut less. Um, less is more, as they say. And if you cut down less, then at least you've got a little bit to file and um, actually make it fit nicely. Because you can always overcut these. So I usually run a cut down the side here on the flat section. And that's usually okay for the width. I mean, it's just getting the right length. Um, and then marking out where all the holes need to go for the oil lanterns on the top. So we'll come back to this in a few minutes. Okay, so I've now squared off this end with the carriage itself. So putting that on there, I can also mark uh, the central line down the middle. And also having it like this, I can then mark where the end uh, needs to be cut here so I'll need to cut this with either a, a cutting saw or um, a, a diamond disc cutter or something like that but probably more likely a hand saw because obviously it will melt plastic if it gets too hot um, so that's all lined up and marked out on the inside I've marked some lines down the side so that's where I'll be cutting it directly down um, and that should then nicely fit over the carriage. And as I say, if you cut less then you can file it to size. Um, you want to be more over than under. Um, you can purchase extras of these because I imagine uh, I'm probably not the only one who will probably undercut it and cock it up at some point. Um, and uh, luckily Roxy Mouldings have made a few spares just in case. So I'll just cut those out and you'll see what it looks like in a short while. So I've now cut down the roof. You can see I've cut it off there. Done this with a knife actually, so it doesn't uh, doesn't really need a saw. I've run a blade along the side to pass this, and that's removed that. It needed a little bit of um, filing down on the sides, but it fits quite nicely on the top not too much overhang either end or on the sides and as you can see I still got my center line hope you can see that even with the uh, bright sun and next job I'll have to do is then mark out where the top oil lamp holes have to go um, so this is all basically B15 and B16 including the seating um, now there are two oil pop positions on this all third carriage uh, one is about there and another one is about here so there's only two on this particular carriage um, and then we'll drill some holes for those and they'll be glued in place with either well it has to be aerodite because uh, the plastic card will react with an all-purpose glue so I'll just do that now and I'll show you the rest in a little bit so one bit I have missed out on the uh, model so far are the steps on the end here. 
uh, these are in section B11 um, part 19 and uh, these are applied in the same way as the uh, door vents above the door um, so that's another job done as you can see the internals now complete everything is stuck into place and also complete is the roof I still need to put some rain strips on but that's very minor um, I've got the handrail on the end here and all the oil pots on the roof so in the next part I'm going to split this video into two parts um, the next part will be basically getting it ready for paint and lining it out adding transfers etc so I hope you've enjoyed this part one of two body build of this kit and hopefully uh, you'll tune into the next part which will be hopefully in the next month or so happy modeling